Hey, Andy here from buildahottub.com. In this video, I'm gonna look at how you can build a DIY infinity pool. So let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so we've all seen these beautiful looking infinity pools. So I get often asked, can you actually build your own as a DIYer? And the answer is yes, you can. Of course, they're a little bit more involved than a regular plunge pool or cocktail pool, but it's totally possible. And it's really down to tweaking the plumbing and making a few changes to the structure. And in this video, I'm gonna do a pseudo deep dive on how we can actually build one ourselves and certainly some of the design considerations and the plumbing considerations around a DIY infinity pool. Now, before we get going, always a great opportunity to say, please do subscribe to the channel, hit that notification icon to be notified when my videos go live. I do two long form videos just like this every single week, a whole bunch of shorts as well. And everything on this channel focuses around DIY hot tubs, plunge pools, and pretty much everything in between. Okay, so when you're looking to design your own DIY infinity pool, the initial considerations are almost the same as a regular plunge pool or swimming pool. So firstly, you're going to have to decide on a size, a location. You're going to have to decide on the depth that you're looking for. And of course, you're going to have to decide on the type of construction method that you'll use. You know, will you use a block cavity? Will you use CMU blocks? Will you use ICF blocks like my own tub blocks? Are you going to do a poured concrete form? What you're probably not going to do, as I always say on this channel, you're not going to do shotcrete or gunite. These are professional methods. You need a lot of skill, a whole bunch of specialist materials. So shotcrete and gunite are definitely off the table for your DIY infinity pool. However, block, ICF, poured concrete forms, CMU blocks, these are all methods that we can definitely make use of as a DIYer. So which is the best method? Well, I think that ICF block is. I think it's the easiest as a DIYer. It goes together like Lego. You fill it full of rebar and concrete. You've got your insulation in there already. Fitting your plumbing is just a case of cutting a hole in some expanded polystyrene. It really is the easiest method to build a pool with. However, it's not the cheapest because it is quite a bit more expensive than you know, regular block, for example. However, you do have your insulation in there and you also have the time saving of using the ICF blocks because they go together so quickly. So it's a, it's a bit of a trade-off, but for me, if I were gonna build my own DIY infinity pool, I'd be building it out of ICF block. Okay, so with your size, your shape, your location all decided, then the next thing we've got to think about is the plumbing. So just like any swimming pool, we need to consider the flow rates, we need to consider the turnover time, so the, the total amount of time it's going to take for the water to actually go through the filter, that's called the turnover time. For a domestic pool, we're looking for a turnover time of around about a six hour mark. How are we going to heat our DIY infinity pool? Are we going to add any additional sanitation methods? So salt systems, or are we going to add UV? There is all the considerations that you need to think about on the plumbing side. However, when it comes to heating, how are you going to heat your DIY infinity pool? Gas, propane, air source, you're probably not going to use an electric heater on this. It's going to be too slow and too expensive. So you're probably looking at either air source heat pump if you've got a mild climate all year round. If you've got a cold climate in the winter then and you still want to use your pool, then this isn't the method for you. You're better off going with something like gas or propane. On the heating side of things as well, do you want to be able to heat the infinity pool without the infinity edge working. So do you want to shut the infinity edge off at any point? If you do, you're going to need to divert the water pull from the balance tank into the actual pool itself. So if the pump is drawing water from the pool and returning it to the pool, then it's not going to overflow into your trough and your balance tank. However, if it's pulling from the balance tank, delivering to the pool, then you're going to get that overflow over the infinity edge 
and it's going to go into your catching trough and then down into your balance tank. So think about that. If you do want to turn it off at night, for example, and you, you still want the water to filter and heat, then you're going to need some kind of a divert to take the inward suction away from the balance tank and drop it into the pool. Okay, so I've mentioned two things here. I've mentioned a catching trough and I've mentioned a balance tank. So what exactly are these? Well, if you have a look over the edge of an infinity pool, you'll actually see a trough underneath. And this is where the water is, is caught as it falls over, kind of like a waterfall. It's got to go somewhere and generally it is caught in a catching trough. From that catching trough, the water is then channeled down into what is called a balance tank. Now, a balance tank, it sounds complicated, but it's basically where we're going to store the water. So think of it this way. If you get into your infinity pool, when you get in, you're going to displace some water. On average, a adult will displace around 15 gallons, which is about 70 litres, that water has got to go somewhere. So it's going to go over the edge, it's going to be caught in the trough, and it's then going to be stored in the balance tank. So if you think 10 people suddenly get into the pool, it's going to displace 150 gallons of water or 700 litres, that's got to go and it's got to be stored somewhere. Now when these bathers get out, we want that water be, to be delivered back to the pool. And that's where the balance tank comes in. So it stores water momentarily when you're actually in the pool and it allows it to be returned to the pool when you get out. So you've got that same amount of water. It, the balance tank levels will go up and down as bathers get in and out of your pool. So as you've seen, the process is pretty simple. We're gonna draw water from the balance tank. So there's gonna be water in there to start with. Generally, we're gonna fill these about a quarter of the size. I'm gonna talk about sizing in a minute. We're gonna draw that water in. We're gonna deliver it to the pool. That's gonna cause the infinity edge to overflow. It's gonna flow into the trough. The trough is then gonna channel the water into the balance tank and the process begins again. Now, in between the balance tank, there's a pump. Pump goes through your sand filter. Sand filter then goes through your heater and your heater then sends the water back to the pool via what we call hot water returns. So, have I confused you? Hopefully not, it's a pretty straightforward system. So, how do we size the balance tank correctly? Well, you've got two things to consider. Firstly, you've got to consider the amount of flow over the infinity edge. And secondly, you need to think about the maximum number of people that could possibly be in your pool at any one time. As a rule of thumb, you will double the highest of these two values. So, for example, if you've got a flow over the infinity edge of around 500 gallons, then you're gonna to want to have a thousand gallon balance tank. And this can be a combination of your trough and the balance tank. Likewise, if you're gonna have, I don't know, 20 people in the pool at any one time, so that's gonna be around 300 gallons or 1,400 liters, you would double that, and that is approximately the size of the balance tank that you're gonna look for. You do need access to your balance tank. You need to be able to clean it. So it's not something that you can just have hidden away with a totally sealed. You do need to be able to open it up and be able to get any debris and give it a good clean when you do drain down your pool. So that's also a consideration when you're putting together your plans for your DIY infinity pool. So there we have it. These are the considerations that you're gonna to have to think about if you're looking to design your own DIY infinity pool. Size, shape, wall construction type, plumbing, balance tank, how big, position, trough, the view that you're gonna frame, your plumbing considerations for your heating, whether you want to heat it whilst the overflow into the infinity edges is happening or whether you want to be able to divert that, think about that as well. Of course, if I can help you with your DIY infinity pool build, then please do get in touch. I can help you design it. And of course, I can help you with any parts you need as well. As always, I appreciate the view. Thanks for watching and I will see you on the next video. If you've liked this video, please do like, share and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you on the next video.